We talk about it, sing about it, and definitely complain about it. The weather. But have we come to the point where we can control the weather? Technically, that's still too good to be true, but the winds might be changing. Let's talk about cloud seeding. It's described as the enhancement of natural precipitation. To explain how cloud seeding works, we need to first talk about clouds. Clouds are a bunch of water droplets or ice crystals floating in the sky. The water droplets are too small to fall as precipitation, but they are large enough to form the clouds we see. In most parts of the world, these droplets are super cooled, meaning they're below freezing, but they remain liquid. Now, sometimes these droplets are just milling around, pushing past each other and not sticking together, kind of like a mist connection. Other times, these droplets bump into each other, like commuters on a train during a busy rush hour. The water vapors collide and stick to particles floating in the air. It could be dust, smoke particles, or even meteoric debris. Those are known as condensation nuclei. So cloud seeding can produce what we want more or less of, more snow, more rain, or smaller hail pellets. This is done by introducing a seeding agent through pyrotechnic flares attached to an aircraft. Think Roman candles with emission. A mission to deliver those condensation nuclei that encourage more collisions and group huddles by ice crystals inside the cloud. Common seeding agents used are dry ice, the solid form of carbon dioxide, silver iodide, or simple salts like sodium chloride. Seeding agents act as additional ice nuclei. In the case of silver iodide, its structure is very similar to ice. Hexagonal, which is why experts think ice wants to bond to it. When silver iodide is used in a cloud, water droplets begin to give up water vapor and shrink. At the same time, the ice crystals already present in the cloud collect this moisture and grow. As ice crystals bang into other ice crystals, they become larger and heavier until they fall from the cloud. So why would we even want to do this? Who does it benefit? In the wintertime, um, increase in snowfall and is uh, you know a, a very significant value add to uh, organizations like hydropower companies. Idaho Power Company, for example, is interested in having more snowfall during the winter because this produces more runoff in the springtime for hydroelectricity. Wineries, such as ones in Mendoza, Argentina, have also used cloud seeding to protect their vineyards from damage through hail suppression. And lastly, insurance companies like ones in Alberta fund cloud seeding projects in order to lessen damage claims they receive. So how much does it cost? Well, the cost can vary. Hail is the most expensive. Rain projects, less expensive. Running $200,000 to $1 million a year, and that might produce an extra 1.5 to 4.5 meters of snow in the mountains, or an extra 50 to 125 millimeters of rain in the summer. And you compare that to what is in, in the market price for water or comparable technologies in, in creating more surface and, 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 and groundwater, that is desalinization, groundwater recharge, uh, some of these, are, or, or even building dams and infrastructure, uh, we're a fraction uh, of that cost. So now that we know how it works, here are some myths busted. Why don't they cloud see to extinguish forest fires? because you can't create rain with cloud seeding. You can only enhance clouds that are already present. Can cloud seeding resolve droughts? Not really, because all precipitation requires clouds. If it's already dry, there won't be enough moisture to rise in the air. No clouds, no extra moisture, no chance of enhancement. However, what can be done is to increase snow production and rainfall when there are clouds to work with. In other words, it needs to be preemptive. But does it work? In 2008, Beijing claimed that they made it rain early with cloud seeding to ensure blue skies with the Olympic opening ceremony. In contrast, the American Meteorological Society released a statement in 2010 saying there's still uncertainty whether current cloud seeding techniques actually work to achieve the desired changes in precipitation. According to the World Meteorological Organization, 52 countries have a weather modification program, and many of them continue to boost funding for such operations, all in an effort to perhaps one day control the weather. Thanks for watching Global News. If you enjoyed what you just saw, please like the video. Also, hit the subscribe button on the screen to make sure you get all the latest international news and best trending videos.